Hey, Lance. Hey, Kim. Thanks for being here. My glad, pleasure. Glad, glad to, to be here. here. That'll be fun. Yeah. Yeah, you're one of, uh, one of my favorite couples, so I'm really excited to have this conversation. And the way that I would like to do it is the way that we do all of our recordings. And I'm going to read the bios that y'all provided. And, um, and then we'll just give you the opportunity to add anything else. And then we'll talk about um, how we might have known each other before this recording. So let me get started. And I'm going to have to bend over, then lean over to read off the computer here. So I am going to read, let's see, Kim's bio first. <laughs> uh, Kim graduated from Bowling Green State University located in Bowling Green, Ohio in 1982 with a bachelor's of science in education. You were a substitute teacher, coach, and you waitressed for three years. You hired on at the Dallas Police Department in August 1985. You promoted to senior corporal in 1991, and you trained over 60 recruits during your career. You're married to Lance, um, married in 1992. You met him at Northwest Substation while he was a rookie. Lance is six and a half years younger, and Lance thought that Kim was too old for him. <laughs> <laughs> Lance. How big of a difference, right? 20. Everything worked out fine. <laughs> <laughs> Until he learned that Kim had a house and a boat and worked extra jobs. <laughs> they had to throw some humor in there. Yeah. Yes. And other officers will definitely understand that. <laughs> okay. So you had a son who was born in 1980, 1995 and a daughter born in 1997. Both graduated from Texas A&M. Your son is married and is a C-130 pilot in the Marines. Your daughter is the connections coordinator at her church. You retired from the Dallas Police Department in June 2017, two months short of a 32-year career in law enforcement. You retired because you had to have two complete knee replacement surgeries and the recovery was a long process. You still enjoyed working patrol, but it was becoming difficult to walk up and down the stairs and you didn't wanna work behind a desk. You love retirement. You stay busy with yoga, weightlifting, cycling, yard work and traveling. And you also enjoy playing with your two Scotties, Hondo <laughs> and Rooster. <laughs> Yep. So, okay, so that was Kim's bio. <laughs> and on, let's go, let's go to the young man's bio here. Oh, here's, so here's, this, here's Rooster. Oh, Rooster. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So Lance, the first thing you put on here is that you're 57 years old and you've been married for 31 years. I got that right. You have two children, <laughs> Ty and Kelly. Ty is married to his beautiful wife, Catherine, and lives in San Diego. He's a captain in the Marine Corps, where he flies a C-130. Kelly lives in Fort Worth and is the Connections Coordinator at Grace Point Church in Capel. You retired from DPD in December of 2020. You hired on DPD June 1988. That's the class of 207. You worked Northwest Patrol, you were an FTO, you were in deployment. You were a class advisor for recruit classes 285 and 292. You're a patrol rifle instructor. You taught officers safety and survival and felony stops at the academy. You were in the police honor guard for nine years. You were born in San Antonio. You graduated from Marion High School in 1984 graduated from Sam Houston State in 1988. Um, and then you hired on in the same year, made you one month later, and you were only 21 years old. Yep. Just so, a baby. Just a baby. Just a baby. <laughs> a baby. Is there anything else that y'all want to add to that um, biography? I can't think of anything no, no, I, on top of my head. Hers flowed a little better because I figured <laughs> she was going to have all the other stuff in there. I just had to put some facts in. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for that. 
And so the way that I know y'all, I met both of you at Northwest because I, when I got to the Academy, I was assigned to Northwest as a rookie. And I had kind of a different kind of training, I think, than a lot of other rookies did. Um, I had um, a bunch of trainers on deep nights. Um, and so I got to work with a whole bunch of different trainers. Y'all, neither of you were my trainer. I, I don't believe that either of you were training yet. Lance, you were a little bit ahead of me. Um, and Kim, how I know you is <laughs> from the locker room. Oh, no. uh, you and Kathy were <laughs> always so kind. You were just kind. And then how I really know you is on my second phase training, um, I had Strody as my trainer in West Dallas. And I remember the car chases and the foot chases. And I would get ready to bail out when you were on the ground behind somebody. And Strody would say, get back in the car. We're just going to meet her when she runs him into the ground. And I was like, no, we can't do that. I've got to stay with her. He's like, you're not going to be able to stay with her. Get in the car. And anybody who knows Strody knows, I mean, that man is one of the biggest men I've ever known, right? And Kim, you and I, we're not very big. In the big scheme of things, we're not very big, right? Um, that's true. So to see you just chasing people into the ground was always a highlight of my career, even though I'm sitting in the car, right? But because um, we did, we would just follow you in the car and then you would chase them down and then they were tired and we would take them into custody. It was, it was a great plan. It was a group effort though. <laughs> I have a funny story about you when you were on training <laughs> Odo. with, with, with Strody. Okay. It's a good one. It's a it good better story. be good, Lance. I laugh back now. When you were, you and, you and Fit, y'all left the station after detail, got into a car chase with a yes. car, but it ended up north on Chapel Creek. And I was working with Steve Hall at the time because my, uh, I think Egg was my partner then, but he was off. For some reason, I was working with Steve. And we, of course, back then, car chases, you had 20 cars in it and a lot of fun. And long story short, chase was over with. And when the, the guys bailed out and Steve tries to physically stop the car, <laughs> With his hand because it's rolling he can't do it and it ends up crashing into our squad car we catch the guys but later on i read and it was a juvenile later on i read your arrest report that you wrote and i remember those words because we were charging them with with uh um ag assault on the po on the police for ramming our car and you wrote and the suspect accelerated wildly <laughs> into the squad car and i never forget wildly <laughs> never seen that used in a report but, but she, hey it worked you know, it's funny you, know you, you were on training with bill then so yeah. he was such an amazing trainer i mean he was such an amazing trainer because you know obviously you're going to make mistakes when you're on training right but he didn't kill you for your mistakes he would just well, he either would let you experience the hell of what happened, or he would tell you a better way to do it. And mm -hmm. when you did something different from him, he was like, tell me why you did that. And if you made sense, he's like, well, that's, <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah. And, you know, and, and we did do a lot of chases back then. I mean, and there was one night where we had like a white car. It was a white car and a black car. And when I was down at jail, I didn't need, I honestly didn't even remember which car because we, we caught both of them right i mean you're gonna catch the car with strody yeah. right it's, yeah. you're gonna catch them yeah. and, and we never had anybody that we didn't take into custody and it was always legitimate it was always real right i mean the driver was actually the driver and all that and i got down there and i didn't remember anything i'm like strody i don't even remember were we going north on hampton or south i don't even know where we were going <laughs> you know I, I truly didn't remember and he wasn't mad or anything he's let's think about it he goes let's think about the first you know the first arrest let's think about the second one and that really helped me a lot to realize that just be methodical mm -hmm. just do police work right you know take your record you know take your notes like you should and just be very methodical and don't panic and don't 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 lie. Don't tell a, something that's not that's not true. 
you know, um, that was, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. So we do have a lot of stories about, um, oh, what's those? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. And, uh, it's really funny because when I hear people tell the same event that I was at, it's so interesting to get it from their angle, you know, their physical angle or their mental angle, their emotional angle, where they are in their career, you know, like what was just kind of normal to them and what was, oh shit to us, you know, recruits and rookies and stuff. But y'all got married. You had a long career. Both of you have had an extremely successful career. And um, I personally want to thank both of you for what you did for the department, uh, the rookies that you've trained, the people that you helped, both of your individual and as a couple's kindness to me. Um, and then Lance, I want to thank you for taking care of Eggleston over all those years. <laughs> he was in my academy class. He's such a neat guy. No, and you were I, classmates? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we were classmates. And um, and we were like totally opposite too. It was really, he's real country and all that. And here I am just trying to get through life, right? <laughs> but um, but I, I always knew that y'all would take care of each other. And I always knew that anything that you did would be above board. And I always knew that you would do your best for the department, for the community. And honestly, even for the suspects, even for the arrestee, I knew that we had two good solid men um, with the, you know, with the best of interest at heart. But y'all did retire. Both of y'all retired. Mm -hmm. um, as a retirement life coach, I love to have the conversations with first responders about what went into the process, the thought process of retirement, um, and what has happened afterwards. So we would love to hear y'all's story. You can start wherever you want. Well, since I retired first, I'll, I'll start. Um, I retired because of my knees. My, my knees got so bad that I had a hard time just walking up and down stairs and I was still training rookies getting in out of the squad car. And I'm like, this, this isn't, this isn't safe for one thing. And, you know, I, I cause we used to get, right. I used to get a lot of foot chases and a lot of that stuff they took yeah. away from us. But I'm like, you know, this, it's probably time for me to retire. So, so I retired and had both of my knees replaced and started the, the rehab process. And, and once I got past that, I'm like, gosh, retirement is, is really nice. I mean, you know, you have some free time. You don't have to get up at 4.30 every morning. And, you know, you're not getting home two or three in the morning because you make a late rest. And and it got to be where, where Lance was like, you're you're really enjoying retirement. I'm like, I, I really am. You know, it, it's good. I have, I have a, you know, home cooking meals waiting for him when he got home because I had the time to fix stuff like that. And, uh, you know, we became debt free. So we would start saving up for trips and stuff. And then... I've been retired, I guess, almost three years before he he retired then, but he was going to work a little longer and, and he he just, you know, really didn't enjoy the job anymore. So we started started doing the math, running the numbers. I'm like, you know, if, if you want to retire now, that, that's fine. So he's like, okay, I, I think I will. So then he retired and I'll let him talk about his retirement then. Yeah. So I got, um, my goal was to work till I was 55. And I used to tell all my rookies that if you see me here working a day after I turned 55 to hit me in the mouth with a brick because something <laughs> happened, I shouldn't be here. But I got real disgruntled. Um, had a lot of things happen on the department that I saw that I just thought wasn't fair. And I was, and of course, at that time, the policing uh, community, uh, the the news was everything was bad. Cops were bad. It was the, it was just, and I just did not like, and it got, I even got sent back to patrol for a while. And I, I just wasn't safe either. I, just, I didn't want to be there. And um, so we were debt free already. And uh, so we, just, we sat down, looked at the numbers, called the pension. And, and, and I think what a lot of officers, they think they can't retire because they look at their gross or, or the pay they're getting that they're going to get from the pension, you know, and I have to remind them, no, you need to compare that to your net, what you're taking home right now, because when you retire, you only have medical insurance and taxes. The only thing that comes out of your check. Well, when you're working, you got all kinds of stuff coming out of your checks. So your check is about 75%. 
you know, and so when you look at it that way, we re-ran the number and go, and, well, there's no reason why. And, and, I, and I called the pension office, said, would it help if I stayed till I was 55? Or what? And they're like, yeah, it might go up a dollar or two, but there's no really reason to. So I was like, so I'm, I'm out. And so I got, uh, but I did not want to be at work. And they sent me back to patrol. And I went to my, my lieutenant, uh, Kevin Campbell, basically went in there and begged him, said, you know, I need to do another year, but I can't do it in patrol. I'm going to get in trouble because I'd go on calls and I was saying things I shouldn't say because I was short tempered and you just get tired of putting up with the crap. And uh, he's like, don't worry. We we got you. And he he let me ride. I got to do a little bit of, de of detective work in the back and um, it all worked out. We set the date retired. I went into the phase down, um, use that money to buy a new truck that I'll, <laughs> that I'll have for, so we didn't, you know, didn't have any, technically didn't have any payments. I used the phase down. So when the phase down was over, the truck was paid off. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and then we're just, it just, I can't get over not having debt is what makes you able to, to do so many different things. Uh, you know, if we want to go on a trip to Alaska, you know, you you budget for a few months, put the money aside, and you pay cash for the whole trip because you don't have any other bills. You know, we have electric bill and water bill. You know, and that's it. And uh, and so yeah, and then but then in retirement, you know, you have to have something to do. And my dream was always to build a, build a car. And so I, I don't have a picture of it. I, I got it. I, I did a big, a full frame off restoration on a cutlass convertible. And yeah, 19, what year? 1969 Oldsmobile cutlass convertible. Nice. Complete, complete restoration. Took two years. It's sitting out there. I go out there and wax it every other day and, and <laughs> start it. You can't drive in the afternoon because it's 110 degrees, but you can drive it in the morning. Nice. And, uh, you know, and it's going to be in our niece, our niece is getting married in October. It's going to be in her wedding. And uh, wow. so we just had a lot of fun. And in between, and then if you don't feel like working on it, you just, you retired, you don't, you don't work, you just do something else. And physical fitness is a big part of our retirement. It's almost like a, a job to us, to both of us. We get up in the morning, we each have our workout routine in the morning. Um, we had a personal trainer shows us how to eat right um, because medical is very expensive. And if you take care of yourself, you don't have to go to the doctor. very. <laughs> so uh, it's, it saves money in the long run. It makes you feel better. And so, yeah, that's, and that's what we, the car and physical fitness and training. I mean, uh, and, and going on vacations. So. So you both mentioned being debt free. And as a retirement life coach, I'm not a financial coach. I don't help anybody with their investments or anything like that. But I do have conversations with people about their spending habits and about how you want your life to look and how you want to be able to show up in the world, you know, um, and how long do you want to work and stuff along those lines there. There's a lot of officers, and y'all know this. Y'all know it from the department, from uh, Dallas Police Department. We have officers that if they get sick, they can't pay their bills the next month. I mean, yeah, like the very Bur next. Burnate. Oh, how's that go? Burnate. Get eight. Get eight. Burnate. The earn eight. Burnate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They earn the earn eight hours, and they, and they burn, burn it. Burn it. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and I I just can't even imagine because you know I had been very heavily in debt do a lot of my own mistakes, but through medical bills also, and a divorce, that'll go right through your money, right? Mm -hmm. But I just can't see living that way long term. And so many officers our age are like, I have no, there's no end in sight for, re for working, because they owe so much money. And I have to be honest, a lot of that is their mind frame. It's the story they're telling themselves because if they got out of that negative way of thinking, 
they could actually start taking actions to become debt free. Yeah. You might have to sell the boat, you know, um, like when we um, when we would do Dave Ramsey in the Dallas Police Department, you know, some of the officers always wanted to know when the next class was going to be because they knew there was going to be boats and motorcycles and <laughs> RVs and stuff oh, for sale. sale. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's right. right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, is, is it possible that if y'all weren't debt free that you would not have been able to retire when you did? Uh, I mean, we not, I mean, we can what, what well also, afford some debt. Yeah, but what also right. helped us, we did the Texas Tomorrow Fund College for the kids. Yeah. You know, as soon as they were born, we started that. And that was a big help because we knew their tuition would be paid for. And, and yeah. then we also both had, you know, our 401, 457s mm -hmm. going. And so, you know, that's like play it's money. Almost like bonus money. And then you learn to live off of your pension. Mm -hmm. We do pretty darn well. Like Love that. it. And, but 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 yeah, it just uh the 401, 457, Roth, whatever you have, I which I always say I wish someone would have told me about a Roth 20 years ago. But uh um, that's play money. That's if you think of that as because that money that's not you know it's going it that, that that's a pot if you keep taking out of not a lot's going back in, especially in the stock market, you know. So uh uh, but yeah, I mean, we probably could have, but it would have been a little more difficult. Would have been difficult. Would but been difficult. I think once we realized we were going to retire, we we loaded up on extra jobs because we're like, you know, once you <laughs> once I went you out there and bought as many guns yeah, as I could. Yeah, once you retire, so. <laughs> you want the extra cash like you used to. So had my list of guns I wanted to buy, <laughs> worked at paid cash for them, and now I yeah. got them all. So. Listen, Lance, you're not allowed to talk to Todd, okay? <laughs> you're not allowed to have this conversation. I, I mean, I'm like, I'm like, oh, that gun's probably worth some money. We could sell it. He goes, you never sell a gun. No, no, no. no. <laughs> never sell a gun. No. Yeah. You yeah. pass them on in the will. You pass them right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. But, I, you know, I hate to think of an officer at any age, but especially in their 50s, working in pain, working with two knees that are bad or a hip that's bad or a shoulder, you know, I just, the thought of that individual having to do things throughout their workday that hurts them and that does affect their ability to do the job and affects their long-term health. Or on the other side of it, I hate the thought of an officer who is mentally or emotionally just not digging it anymore you know, just doesn't love. I hate the thought of them coming to work because of where they are financially. But that is actually a reality for a lot of people. And, you know, all we hear about is investment, investment, investment. And it's not very many departments or very many individuals that talk about lifestyle, how, you know, you can change your lifestyle and also create more wealth out of what you're earning. And I laugh when y'all say extra jobs because. <laughs> It wasn't that I was working a lot of jobs when I left, but I was doing a lot of overtime and it, I had a very good overtime rate, you know, yeah. just like y'all, yeah. it was a yeah. lot of money, right? Yeah. And I, to this day, when I look at something, I'm like, oh, that's two hours of overtime <laughs> yeah. or, oh, that trip, that's just 10 hours of overtime. And then I have to realize, oh, there is no overtime. There is no overtime anymore. Nope. No overtime. That's gone. That's good. Gone. <laughs> gone. Um, so y'all mentioned that you the physical fitness and the and and what y'all do. And mm -hmm. I know that I don't have to tell y'all this, but maybe some people listening don't realize, you know, how important it is to stay in shape. Um, physically, you know, you're doing all you can to ensure a, a longer life a longer life with mobility and strength and balance. Um, you mentioned that we don't want the doctor bills and stuff. One of the, the huge thing that we have is we have all those years of stress that we have to try to make up for. You know, we have to try in our early years of retirement to get enough sleep, to make sure that we're eating appropriate for our bodies and to make sure that we are working out every day and that we're doing something that's physically, emotionally, mentally good for us. Because even though I am not a trauma coach, well, 
we all got trauma. You know, we, we've, we've got it. And um, we know that it is very important to be physically active. And I would imagine if y'all wake up and do it, and that you have a coach that you're very intentional about your fitness. Yes. Yep. We we're, probably work yeah. out six, six days out of the week, every week. So, yep. yeah. And there's a community yeah. thing to it. You're, you're. Oh, the camaraderie and stuff like at yoga class. It's the people you're working out with. They're trying to stay healthy. It's uh, usually happy, fun. You cut up, have a lot, and, and it's there's a mental thing to it also, you know. Yeah, yeah. Kim, you mentioned you do yoga. Yeah, I do. It's fun. Is, <laughs> is that anything that you twenty years ago were you no, doing yoga? I, I mostly started it because of my knees, and I I didn't realize how hard challenging yoga actually is. But it's yeah. you know the older we get, I mean I have a phenomenal instructor. I call her Maria the Miracle Worker. <laughs> um, I even did it for yeah. a little while. It, it's you don't want to see that it's pretty <laughs> um, i go to a yoga studio that doesn't have any mirrors so you never know how bad you look you just think that you're rocking it <laughs> so um i do yoga it's i have a funny little story about it um i um i still have my essential oil business mm. and a lot of the people that go to this particular yoga studio also do um essential oils and stuff and I have a friend of mine owns it and she invited me in. And so I went in and I did it and I enjoyed it. And I know that I need the flexibility and I know that I need the balance. And I know they say, don't do yoga for flexibility. Don't do it for balance, but it, it is, it is what it is. It helps you with my flexibility and it helps you with my balance. Mm -hmm. So then I registered for a hot yoga class, right? Cause I like hot yoga. If I'm going to be in there, I'm going to burn some calories. You know, I'm going to get something out of it. Well, it turned out it wasn't a hot yoga class. It was a yoga class called yin yoga and yoga nidra. And what that is, is you literally get into a pose, you get into a stretch mm -hmm. and you hold it for three to five minutes. That's and then you go to the time. other side. <laughs> yes, it's a very long time. <laughs> I was on like the third or fourth stretch and I realized this is not hot yoga. <laughs> That's not what you thought you signed up for, right? I don't know what this is, but this is not hot yoga. And I, I will go as far as to say that it was life changing because I loved it. Oh, and I did. I absolutely loved it. And when it was done, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is what I've been needing. This is because it, it, you know, it has some brain, mind, brain connection. Yogis are probably rolling their eyes when I'm talking about it this way. Yeah. But the slowness of it and the stillness of it um, and the breathing in it does some stuff for your mind and all that. Hmm. And um, that's almost the only yoga that I do now. Yeah. At Des Marie. And, I know. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought I was going to go to hot yoga because I've done hot <laughs> yoga for years and I really liked it. And that, yeah, this is great. This is absolutely fabulous, you know. And again, it's just very deep stretches for three to five minutes at a time and you practice on your breathing. And the instructors that I go to, they talk to you while you're doing it. Mm -hmm. And some of it's guided and some of it isn't. And some of it's just quiet. Some of it's just stillness. I, you know, I used to wear a heart rate monitor to yoga. Okay. I wanted to burn yeah. calories. <laughs> you weren't burning a whole bunch of that it, though. Did yeah. they bring any goats in? <laughs> Were there any goats? Is this a goat yoga thing too? I have done baby goat yoga. <laughs> <laughs> I will be the first to admit I did not get much yoga done because I was too busy playing with the goats. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But that might not be for me because it might be too, you know, might be too busy yeah. playing with the go or, you know, calling them over to me or whatever. So, yeah. That's yeah. Right. Um, so what do y'all see next in retirement? You're both still young. You're healthy. The kids are successful. You're debt free. And we What's actually have a, we have a trip planned next month. We're going to the glaciers in Montana with well, Maria, my yoga instructor and her husband. They're big hikers. We'll be gone for almost three weeks. And then uh, we hope to do Machu, Machu, I can't Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu next May. So, so we're trying to, you know, cause you're in, working as long as we did on the police department. You see a lot of horrible stuff. 
see a lot of officers who died at a very young age. You see officers that retire and have heart attacks and, and, and you, you learn that you're not guaranteed tomorrow. Yeah. So you need to enjoy yourself within reason. You know, don't, don't go to Rio tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> uh unless you but unless you want to cash out anyway anyway but but i'm saying so we're so we try to find things that we really love to do and, and, I, and i used to joke with kim as like you know we'd love to do machu picchu early because i doubt we'll be doing it when we're in our 80s <laughs> probably not <laughs> you know so let's do some of these things now while we're physically able to do it and enjoy it you know and then and then we'll just take it you know one day one year at a time um uh, you know I, we're, i'm not ruling out getting a part-time job at some point down the road i just eventually you get to where you get everything done and maybe well i wouldn't mind working 20 hours a week somewhere mm -hmm. that i enjoyed and then i get to pick and if someone makes me mad there i can say i'm out <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. see you later <laughs> uh, and and then uh, you know our kids are young and so enjoying time with them yeah so and and our son and daughter all live in san diego and that's not a bad place to go to uh to go visit to go visit so uh, go there are they on coronado yes well yeah, he's, yeah. he's stationed coronado with the yeah no he's stationed at miramar oh which is the marine corps base so okay coronado is a navy base i believe i think if we could we would move to coronado well, San Diego is. Yeah, the, it's beautiful. But say the what you want is, about the you know? goofy politics over there, but that it's just gorgeous there. That's the only problem. I mean, the problem yeah. is it's California. <laughs> yeah. But you see why people put up with it because it's the you know, the most boring job in the world is the weatherman in San Diego. I mean, it's <laughs> yeah. eighty-one degrees all the time. You yeah. know, it's funny because you and I we were. Um, we were talking about if there's something that you really want to do, you shouldn't say never. You should just plan for it. Yeah. And the other day, I uh, we were driving back from Colorado, and I asked Todd, I said, babe, I said, do you want to, after you retire, the first summer after you retire, do you want to find a place on Coronado and, and rent it for a couple of months? And he was like, oh, we could never afford to do that, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, you know, if we start looking for it now, putting the word out, maybe we can house sit for somebody. You know, I mean, there's things that you you got to get creative with it. You know, I mean, it is very hard to find rentals there. It's very hard to find any place that's going to let dogs come there. But that doesn't mean that I want to say no to it. So, you know, if we start thinking about it and start putting the word out, you know, maybe it'll happen, you know? Maybe it'll if happen. You want it to happen if you think about. It, I mean, you'll have your eyes open. You'll watch website, whatever. Eventually, yeah. after he retires, who knows? Maybe it will pop up. Look, there's someone looking for someone to house it for a month. Yeah, and think well, about it. Two cops, right? They can. They can. Two yeah. cops. We don't need fancy. I don't need big and fancy. You know, we do yeah. want indoor plumbing, of course. But I mean, that's <laughs> not. You know, that's it's not good. fancy. Yeah. <laughs> but um you know and it, it could happen and and i think that in retirement you know i i didn't i didn't live my police officer life that way it was very in a box it was very structured and you know that's the life of that's the job but retirement doesn't have to be that way you know and and maybe we don't get out to coronado for 3 months maybe we get there for 3 weeks but isn't 3 weeks better Better than zero, right? Right. <laughs> yeah. You know, right? Speaking about about planning for retirement and all that. Uh, we all know Eddie, Eddie Crawford. Mm -hmm. Eddie was uh, was my second phase trainer, and he taught me so much about planning. He's the one that every day started your four hundred one k. You started your four hundred one k. And now, you know, we were talking when we were rookies. Well, we, if you were, if you brought home a check for 400 bucks, you were like, Woo and <laughs> where am I going to get that money from? And he'd always, he would always get on to me about planning for the future. And he's like, you know, start it now. And, and then this will open up everything to you when you're in your 50s. And, and that's what we did, you know, and, and uh, 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 and it worked. You know, it enabled us to leave. You know, I could have 
I could have stayed to lost 57 or something, but there was no reason to. So. No, yeah. your car needed to. Yeah. And I wasn't happy. That's he was grumpy. <laughs> yeah, I was not happy at work. So. And you know, that's an important thing to look at also because you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to be a doctor to know that it is not good for us to go to work every day miserable, right. especially the kind of job that we were doing. I mean, I remember this woman, I was on channel seven and she called an ambulance because she had a toothache. <laughs> and I was so mad. I was so mad because we know people who have insurance, they could have an arm missing and they're not calling an ambulance because of how much it costs, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so she called an ambulance for a toothache. And I said, do you know how much that ambulance costs? She's like, you can't talk to me like that. And one of my officers kind of grabbed me and pulled me aside, you know, <laughs> but I was like, I just don't want to do this anymore. I'm just not, I'm not, I'm not doing it with a servant's heart anymore. And I'm not even doing it with a warrior protective heart anymore. Right. I'm doing it. Uh, it does it really even matter. I mean, does it even matter what I do out here? And Obviously, I know it matters. I know we have to take care of people. We have to protect people. But I mean, in my heart, I'm like, it doesn't matter. I've been doing this now for 30 years and it doesn't matter. It's the same call. It's the same location. It's the same people, except, you know, maybe their grandkids or something, you know, and that's like, it's time to go. You know, I used to, yep. when I was in the honor guard, we got to travel a lot to different parts of the country for funerals and different things. And you met officers from all over the world, you know, mm -hmm. especially when we would go to National Police Week in DC, you meet officers from all over the place. Yeah. And it just amazed me, you could sit down and talk to uh, a trooper from South Carolina or a city cop from some small town in Montana and your stories were always the same. The same thing, <laughs> yeah. They yeah. were always the same every time, every time. And you just, and, yeah, crazy. no matter where you go, you can drive down the street and you can go, well, that's a prostitute. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, how do you know? I'm like, well, mom, I'm not judging her. I'm just saying that's what she's doing. She goes, well, this is San Antonio. I'm mom. It's like, mom, it's the same no matter where you go. <laughs> you know, or, you, you know, Todd and I, when we travel up to Colorado, we'll pull into a gas station. And we both kind of look at each other and I'm like, well, I've counted four felons so far. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it is, it, you're right. It is what it is in those stories, you know, um, but you know, we carry them with that, us. Getting to, I mean, how bad it was at the end. I remember listening to when, when you and Pam were talking and we were, li we were listening to y'all uh, to your video and, and it's true, when we were all rookies, you did not want a day off. You had so much fun. <laughs> and I, I used to joke, if my sergeant, Bud Green, would have came to me and said, Lance, you did such a great job, you're going to get Friday and Saturday off. I'd go, what are you punishing me for? I want Tuesday, and I only want four hours off. I want to work the rest of the time. And you don't have to pay me. You know, yeah. because we had, and people look at you like, really? I go, yeah, we had... So much fun. So much fun with everybody and the practical jokes and, and the work. But I'm just saying, you just love going to work, you know? And uh, um, This might have been your chase. I'm not <laughs> sure whose it was because I left work early, right? I was actually on training and uh, my ex-husband wanted to take me to a Janet Jackson concert. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I... Uh, I wanted to go to Janet Jackson, but I didn't want to miss work. But anyway, I was persuaded into doing it. And I went to the sergeant and I'm like, listen, you don't have, and my trainer, I'm like, you don't have to let me off. Okay. You don't have to let me off. It's okay. I, you know, he's like, no, it's okay. Blah, 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 blah. And so I left work a couple of hours early and there was like a two and a half hour car chase that happened that oh. night. I was so <laughs> mad I never ever volunteered to take off ever again it was like years I think it was like when I got married for my honeymoon I took off I mean I just like did not want to take off I didn't want to take off yeah yeah and we've all 
we'll still sit around and talk about that. How it just and average people don't understand that. That it's and I mean, you know, I used to tell rookies in the academy when when you know when I was teaching about how you're going to start a job here where you will be. It'll be Christmas Eve, 25 degrees, sleeting. It'll be 2 a.m. You're on the freeway with icicles frozen on your nose, <laughs> slipping, falling, can't feel your fingers, and having the best time of your life. Yeah. Your, your pen won't even write. You can't even write. Yeah. No, yeah. because your pen froze, you know. <laughs> But you're having the greatest time in your life because you're out there with all your friends being miserable together. So you're enjoying it. It's, it's fun, you know? So, and that's what is so hard for our brains because at the same time you're doing that, because I left Northwest, not by choice. I was drafted to North Central. I worked there six months and I worked out a trade to go to Southwest. And I hit the ground running and never looked back. I loved it. But that was in the early 90s. And we all know how many homicides we had in the early 90s. Yeah. And so it is so crazy because on one side of me, I'm like, oh my God, it was the best thing ever. It was so fabulous. But then on the other side of me, I'm like, I watched three teenage boys die that night. And yeah. then the next night I watched one who was shot in the head. And then the next night, you know, blah, blah, blah. But man, this was, you know, chasing the shooter was fun running down the alley after the bad guy. I mean, oh my God, what were we thinking? But you know, um, running, down the running down the alley with the armed bad guy who just yeah. shot the guy on the ground was fun. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Adrenaline dump. Fun. Yeah. So fun. Yeah. Now it did change for me when I had children. Yes. Yeah. When I had children, it that was, was not as much fun. And I do believe that we made a lot better decisions of our, with our driving. And I think we made a lot better decisions on the alleys. We still did it, but I think it, um, I think it mattered more. And I'll be honest, it was always bad for me to see those young boys laying on the ground, the teenage boys um, on the ground. But as a mother of two boys, that really changed for me when I had boys right? and you know, that, that changed for me, but it does not take away from the excitement <laughs> and the fun and the need to always have that adrenaline in our life. <laughs> yep. You know, I, when I was another thing, just when I was teaching, I read a lot and you learn about the average person only has an adrenaline dump maybe twice in their life, you know, and, we would have them once a week once a week <laughs> twice a week you know and you get yeah. one and more you know and it, yeah. yeah yeah and sometimes it was such an event that it affected you for days i mean yeah. like like days you know you go into survival right afterwards and you don't really you know you're not thinking about it but it, it's there it's still there those chemicals are still coursing through our our veins hence why it's so important that we are working out now and that we are not, you know, drinking and using illegal or even legal drugs and, and stuff like that. Right. So here comes the big question. <laughs> Todd likes me to ask this of all of our guests. How does Kim want to be remembered? How does Lance want to be remembered? And actually as a couple, if you wanted to answer it as a couple, we would love to hear that also. But how would each of you like to answer that question? How would you like to be remembered? Probably as a, a fair and kind person, a good mother, a good wife. We try to, you know, be good role models for our kids. Because mm -hmm. uh, our son's married, our, our daughter's not, not yet. Um, but, but yeah, that's probably a good, a good father. Yeah. And a good husband. I want to be someone that uh, uh, our kids are proud of. Basically, what it comes down to. Yeah. Love so. that. <laughs> Love that. Well, thank you for sharing everything that you shared today. And um, I will have it in the notes that if anybody wants to get a hold of y'all, they can get a hold of me and then I will give you all their information. Yeah. Um, since you don't have, you know, since you don't have businesses and since you're not serving the public in a way with a public contact, I'll just have them go through me. 
and okay. then um, I'll send information to y'all. But I can't thank you enough um, for taking the time as individuals and as a couple. And again, I want to thank you for all that you did for the department, all that you did for individuals like me and, and other officers and also for the community. Well, thank you for everything you've done also. I mean, you know, people look up to you also, Kim. Mm. They, they do. They do. <laughs> they do. Thank you. I never got to work for you, but I worked in right next to you. You're, you're oh, all, so you got to hear you're always, you're always happy and upbeat every time I was yep. around you. So, yep. Thank you. Thank you very much. I remember accelerated wildly <laughs> into the Okay. You, you, okay. <laughs> knowing me <laughs> and knowing <laughs> Strody, don't you think that Strody probably had something to do with that? I don't know about that word. That's but always stuck out with wildly. me. Wildly. <laughs> wildly. <laughs> Sounds great. It does. <laughs> Got him in jail, so I it's guess. It's all about the wording. <laughs> right? So also, one more thing about that. If you remember right, we didn't have spell check back in the day. No. Yeah. So I could only use words that I knew how to spell. Oh, there you go. That's exactly right. Yes. So there were many a times when I would say, hey, what's another word for, you know, this? Because I don't know how to spell it. So, yeah. yeah. Great That's times. Yeah. And we could sit here and talk. For the rest of the night about the old yeah part. we could yeah we could <laughs> great thank you so very much you're welcome good times good times <laughs>